So now we'll move on to gallbladder disease. Maybe not as life-saving or maybe not quite as sexy as intra-abdominal hemorrhage or a ruptured abdominal aneurysm, but something that's very common, something that if we look for, we can quickly narrow our differential or shorten our diagnosis and decrease our cognitive load and expedite our workup. So certainly worthwhile, certainly helps me in my everyday care of patients in emergency medicine, but certainly translatable to inpatient care of patients with abdominal pain if this hasn't been already addressed. Very applicable in the outpatient setting as well to expedite care, decrease visits, and other resource use. So just a few tips about imaging. Probably the number one piece of advice is when you're imaging the gallbladder, have the patient take in a deep breath. That just pushes the gallbladder out from under the rib cage and makes it easier to find. Sometimes you may turn the patient on their left side. That also brings the gallbladder out from under the rib cage. Often, if they are difficult, you may have to try to image them from a few different positions. I usually start here in the midclavicular line, just under the costal margin, but sometimes I have to move up and try to image between the ribs. And then lastly, I'll come out from this window and try to image through the liver and sometimes even through the kidney itself to identify the gallbladder. So try all of those positions with deep breaths and maybe even with the patient on their left side. Just going through those, I usually start here. If I find the findings, then we'll examine in multiple planes, so sagittal, transverse, different oblique planes to get full images of the gallbladder. And then if it's difficult, I'll move up above the costal margin. And again, if I find my anatomy and my landmarks, then I'll do different views. And then lastly, we'll move to the side here, kind of imaging through the liver or through the kidney itself. And then if I'm still having trouble or if I just feel like I still want to get better views, I'll turn the patient on their left side. I have colleagues who just start with the patient on their left side and assume that it's always going to be difficult. That's perfectly appropriate. And if that's your preference, certainly go that way. And always, always a full inhale is almost always going to help you. Even with cases where you have good images of the gallbladder, having the patient take a full inhale is going to improve the views that you get. A couple of other important things are to just recognize the hepatic parenchyma. So it's going to be this homogeneous kind of gray, faintly speckled tissue. So usually you're going to see it on either side of the gallbladder. Very, very important to examine the gallbladder all the way from the fundus all the way down to the neck. If you miss a little piece of the gallbladder and don't scan through it completely, the place you missed is where the stones are gonna be. So make sure you examine it completely. And if you follow the gallbladder from the fundus to the neck, then that's usually gonna help you identify the portal vein, which is where the gallbladder, the neck, empties into the duct that runs with the portal vein, and that's where your common bile duct is gonna lie. So if you can identify the portal vein, you pretty much built in have evaluated the common bile duct, and if you pay attention to that, you can answer the question of whether it's dilated or not. So recognize these landmarks, do a full exam to help you not miss things and recognize the gallbladder and not mistake it for another structure. So just landmarks to emphasize a little bit, we've got liver, here's the gallbladder, there's the portal vein. And here we can see this in real time as we scan through. This is gallbladder. Notice this gallbladder has a fold in it. So you really want to scan all the way through it because you could see a fold and think that's the fundus, but it's not, it will fool you. And as we follow down towards the neck, we can see the portal vein right here is the portal vein, right? Let's just, so this is portal vein here. And if we follow the gallbladder to its terminal part of the neck, fundus up here, we follow it, there's fold. We come down to the neck of the gallbladder. And then here we identify the portal vein. We can see the walls of the portal vein, the common duct and the hepatic artery run with this. So if we see the portal vein, we fan through it completely and there's nothing else dilated and the common bile duct is normal. Sometimes kidney peaks in down here. There's some of the landmarks. We'll look at a few more examples because it looks different from person to person. Important things to point out in this image is the different structures from superior, superficial to deep. So this is all gallbladder here. We see it right next to the liver parenchyma. We see part of the portal system right here. And then down here, we see the inferior vena cava. Sometimes in thin folks, these can all be very close together and can be quite confusing. So systematically identifying your landmarks and your anatomical structures is gonna help you. So keep your eyes on gallbladder to portal vein to inferior vena cava. Now moving over to this other image, here we see gallbladder down towards the neck. We see the portal vein. So let's go through those in a little bit more detail. Here's the portal vein, common bile duct running right over top. 
And then as we fan through, we identify the neck and then all the way up to the fundus of the gallbladder. And we notice that it has a nice, crisp, well-defined, bright white wall. So that's the sign of a non-inflamed gallbladder. There's no fluid around it. The wall's nice and crisp and well-defined. And we see our other landmarks to help us assure that we're identifying the right structure. And if you want to pay a little more attention, we've got kidney down here, which depending on where our slice is, we may see the right kidney in our view with the gallbladder. So just a few variations. If you're like me and you're working in the emergency department or you're examining a patient on the floor who just had chicken dinner, then they may have a contracted gallbladder. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to identify, but with a little practice and recognizing landmarks, you can find this. So in this example, we've got liver here, all liver parenchyma. Portal vein is here. This is the outline of the contracted gallbladder. And when it's contracted, the wall can look a little falsely thick. But you see we still have a nice clean white border around it. And this is just the contracted muscle of the gallbladder inside. We see an edge shadow, and as you fan through it, it will always stay on the edge. Just another example here, liver parenchyma. Here's the bright outline of the gallbladder, and here's the inner wall of contraction. But this is not wall thickening from inflammation. This is just a contracted gallbladder. Here's the portal vein peeking in down here. So using those landmarks can help us not make mistakes in interpretation. So there they are outlined, the edge artifact that is not shadowing from stone. And here's just a clip showing what that's going to look like as we fan through it. Again, note our landmarks, liver parenchyma, portal vein, here's our contracted gallbladder. And now some abnormal findings. So here is a gallbladder with still a pretty thin, well-defined, crisp wall. If we follow the posterior portion, we see some loss of smoothness in the wall. And then if we're careful with our eyes, we'll see some subtle shadowing from all these very fine stones that are layering in the lower portion in the neck of the gallbladder. These could easily be missed um, if you're not careful. These are, so these are subtle. They're not always subtle, but these are subtle stones. Here again, uh, maybe not the prettiest picture. We've got some artifact here, but this is a transverse view of a gallbladder. And here we can actually see, if we are careful with our eyes, these little round stones and subtle shadows from gallstones in the gallbladder. So if you see it's not a nice smooth wall all the way around, that's probably a clue that there may be stones in there. Stones will always shadow. If you see gray material in the gallbladder that doesn't shadow, then that's probably sludge and not stones. But if you see if they're white and there are shadows coming down, that is not sludge, those are stones. Here we see a gallbladder where the wall is no longer well defined. All of this is wall and it's thickened. So this is somebody with an inflammatory condition. Most of the time this is probably representative of a calculus cholecystitis. On occasion you may see findings like this in patients with acute hepatitis. Uh, but most of the time this is probably a calculus cholecystitis if you see this thickened wall but no stones. You may see a thickened wall in calculus cholecystitis as well, but in this case, there are no stones here. Some other examples, now none of these are easy ones. We're showing you all kind of harder to recognize findings. So here's what we call the West sign. So we just see the edge of the wall of the gallbladder. We see this bright echo and shadow. So that's W-E-S, West sign. Sometimes the gallbladder is so full of stones, all you'll see is this kind of bright white edge and this dark, dark shadow right in the area where you expect to see the gallbladder, which you can identify properly by recognizing other landmarks like liver parenchyma. And if you were to fan through, you should see portal vein down here as well. This is a transverse view of a similar finding. Again, we're in the liver parenchyma. We're close to the portal system here, not quite at the portal vein but we can see this rough looking wall, this echogenic area, and a big dark shadow. So this is wall echo shadow sign. This is also a gallbladder that is so full of stones it can be hard to identify. And this last one over here, so we've got kind of a nice long axis view of this gallbladder. Couple of findings. First off, it's got this gray material in here that does not shadow, so this is sludge. And then there are also stones. We see a stone here with a shadow, a stone here with another shadow, and then all the way down here in the neck, this is a pretty good sized stone with a big shadow. Um, so this is definitely cholelithiasis with also sludge. And also notice that the wall 
is no longer white, crisp, well-defined, and it's kind of thickened. So this is a patient who looks like they have cholecystitis. And these are some of the hallmark findings. The only thing that may be a little bit of pericholecystic fluid there, we would have to scan through in real time to really see if that's what that is or not. Could be a vascular structure as well. So these are some abnormal findings. These are pretty significant abnormal findings. Hopefully the first ones you see are easy, but they're not always gonna be the super easy findings. And then we may see kind of this thickening and layering of the gallbladder wall. Both of these cases, this is a calculus. So this is what the, the wall may look like this with these kind of layered looks, or sometimes it may just be thick and ill-defined. We also can see in this example here, a little bit of pericholecystic fluid layering right along the wall of this gallbladder here. I'm not sure there's any over on this side. So these are abnormal gallbladders. In both of these cases, this looks like a calculus cholecystitis. A few other findings that are not going to be as relevant early on, but if you want to recognize things like the bile duct being dilated, here is the portal vein. So again, the portal vein is the key to finding the common bile duct. Um, this is a dilated duct. Now, usually your eyeballs will help you pick up that it's dilated and then you can zoom in and get a measurement of it. When you measure the common bile duct, you measure from the inner wall to the inner wall and the size roughly six millimeters is the upper limit of normal. Although older patients and patients that are post cholecystectomy may go up to maybe a centimeter or so. And if you really get detailed, you can sometimes identify intrahepatic ductal dilation uh, this is probably a little more for the advanced user, but you'll see some of the portal venous branches here. If you can see the ducts along with the portal venous branches kind of deeper into the liver, those are probably abnormal. The main thing that we'll want to know if, if we see a patient with gallstones or signs of cholecystitis is, is the common bile duct dilated or not? You may see if you identify the portal vein, this double barrel sign. So this is the portal vein and we can use color to help us um, delineate that uh, and this is the common bile duct here and it is dilated in this case it's 0.93 centimeters or a little over nine millimeters so this is definitely dilated assuming this is a younger patient who still has their gallbladder again here key to finding the common bile duct is just identifying the portal vein if you see portal vein and you see another thing dilated with it then that's probably the dilated common bile duct and if it's dilated you definitely should measure it and get a measurement and then also consider the patient's age and whether they've still got their gallbladder or not when assessing the relevance of their dilated duct. And all of those considerations can help us come to a diagnosis in our second case that we talked about. This patient we can see, now we would probably want some more views of this, but we quickly have some clues here already. We see liver parenchyma all through here. This is the outer wall of the gallbladder. It doesn't look super well defined. We would need, we definitely need some more views here, but we definitely see some edges of stones that shadow in this gallbladder. So there's definitely some calculus, some cholelithiasis at the very least. And with a few more views and a little zooming in, maybe we could see if the wall is well defined, if there's any fluid or not, if this is truly a case of cholecystitis. Just point out another thing is this liver is very bright and darkens as you go down. That's one of the findings of fatty liver. Normally the liver is fluid density, so you should see all, very well all the way through it. And it should actually give you a good view of posterior structures and vasculature. But when it's infiltrated with fat, the ultrasound energy gets absorbed as it goes through and we lose transmission as we go deeper. So this is what fatty liver looks like. Unfortunately, very common in our population. So just looking through there, distally here, you can see the portal vein down further. And so in this case, we can pretty quickly come to a diagnosis of at least cholelithiasis. And depending on the other findings or maybe the clinical scenario, we may suggest cholecystitis. So just reminders, when identifying or looking for the gallbladder, big breaths, that's going to be the most important imaging tip I can probably give you. Make sure you identify the gallbladder from the fundus all the way to the neck so you don't miss hidden stones, especially at the neck. Identifying the portal vein will, one, just help you confirm you're in the right place for the gallbladder. And when you want to answer questions about the common bile duct, identifying the portal vein is the key to answering those questions. Things you're going to look for are stones. 
You're going to assess when you have the image of the gallbladder, how tender are they right there, and is the wall thickened, and is there fluid around the gallbladder or not. Here is a suggested algorithm. So you have a patient who has suspected or possible cholecystitis. You're going to perform a point of care ultrasound. And if it's negative, you don't see anything. You don't see stones, you don't see wall thickening, you don't see fluid, then cholecystitis is pretty unlikely. They still could have biliary dysfunction, but that can often be worked up later. If you just see stones, then you need to add in some other clues. If their liver enzymes and their bilirubin are normal, and you can get their symptoms controlled, then that can probably be an outpatient workup from there. If they only have stones and no other findings on ultrasound, but maybe they have some lab abnormalities, or maybe you just have their pain, is un you're unable to control their pain, then you should treat them as if they have cholecystitis and maybe yes or no, whether you, depending on your scenario, do you need further imaging and a surgical evaluation? Maybe you need to admit that patient. If they have two or more signs, so they have stones and or wall thickening, or they have stones and or pericholecystic fluid, or wall thickening and pericholecystic fluid, they have signs of truly cholecystitis by imaging, then you can probably just go to a surgical evaluation there. Again, depending on your scenario, maybe you need other imaging, and then maybe you need to admit that patient. So that's your suggested algorithm in working up these patients and how to incorporate that information. But again, you do this early in the course of working up your patient with abdominal pain. It may shorten your differential very quickly and help direct you one way or another. If it's a positive study, then you have a pretty good diagnosis already. If it's a normal study, then you can focus your work up on other causes of their abdominal pain. I'm gonna come back to the midline to find the gallbladder in a longitudinal or sagittal view. And I can see it pretty well, but I'm still gonna ask for a big breath and hold. And as I fan side to side, I can see the gallbladder with a fold and the portal vein gallbladder and portal vein make like an exclamation point in the abdomen. If I rotate counterclockwise, I can catch the portal vein going all the way out. And the common duct is a tiny little thing running over top. Uh, when you're ready, we'll breath hold again. So here's a little Mickey Mouse portal vein, common duct, hepatic artery, that's the portal triad. They all run together. That's inferior vena cava running underneath the liver, hepatic veins draining into it. Okay, relax. If I rotate counterclockwise, if we fan down towards her feet, we can see the gallbladder come into view. Right there, her gallbladder has a little fold. The gallbladder is also a landmark to divide right and left lobes of the liver.